The story's premise is that every 5,000 years, in conjunction with a planetary arrangement, a great evil appears whose purpose is to destroy life. In preparation for the next appearance in 2263, a group of aliens called the Mondoshawan arrive on Earth in 1914 to extract the only weapon capable of defeating the great evil, a collection of four stones representing the classical elements, water, fire, earth, and air, and the eponymous fifth element that conjugates the other four into organic life. The stones are kept in a hidden chamber inside a small temple in Egypt, where an archaeologist has been studying the runes that tell their history. After taking the stones and a sarcophagus housing the fifth element, the Mondoshawans present a key to a priest and tell him to pass the information provoking their mission through future generations in preparation for the evil's arrival. 300 years later, in 2263, the great evil appears and in the form of a fiery planet and destroys a fleet of interplanetary battleships. When the battleships fire missiles on the planet, the planet doubles in size. On Earth, the world's president consults with his military and science advisors about the approaching planetoid. When the Mondashawans attempt to deliver the elements back to Earth, they are ambushed by another alien race, the shape-shifting Mangalores. The president is informed that the stones are not at the crash site, but instead were given by the Mondoshawans to someone they could trust, the Diva Plava Laguna, who will be performing on the leisure planet, Floston Paradise. Paradise earthly scientists are able to recover a portion of the fifth element and use a reconstitution device to recreate it, whereupon it takes the form of a human woman named Lilu, described as the perfect being. Lilu, terrified of her unfamiliar environs, escapes the scientists and crashes the roof of a cab belonging to taxi driver Corbin Dallas, a former major in the Federated Army's Special Forces. Dallas then delivers her to priest Vito Cornelius, the current guardian of the Mondo Shawan's knowledge. Dallas, Cornelius, and his acolyte David help Lilu recover, though Dallas is forced out of Cornelius' apartment before learning her purpose. Cornelius learns from Lilu that the four elements were not held by the Mondoshawans, and that Lilu must recover the stones from the diva. Meanwhile, wealthy industrialist Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg has attempted to gain the stones as urged by communication with the great evil. After learning that the Mangalore's attack on the Mondoshawans was unsuccessful in recovering the stones, Zorg betrays and kills them, whereupon the surviving Mangalores decide to extract revenge and gain the stones for themselves. Dallas is later met at his apartment by his general Munro, who informs him that he has been drafted back into the army in order to travel to meet the Diva, having rigged the annual Gemini Croquette Contest to allow Dallas to win. Their meeting is interrupted by the arrival of Cornelius and Lilu. Dallas, learning of Lilu's need, offers to help, but is knocked out by Cornelius who steals his winning transportation tickets and departs. Dallas accepts the job from General Monroe and travels to John F. Kennedy International Airport, intercepting Cornelius, David, and Lilu before they board their flight and escorts Lilu. The Mangalores and Zorg's assistant are rebuffed by the ticketing agent when they try to pose as Dallas. Cornelius instructs David to prepare the temple in Egypt and then sneaks aboard the passenger space plane before it leaves. On the flight, Dallas meets interstellar radio personality Ruby Rod, who escorts him as the contest winner. Upon arrival at Floston Paradise, Dallas is taken by Ruby to prepare for the show, while Lilu waits near the diva's quarters in order to retrieve the stones from her after her performance. The diva's show is interrupted by the Mangalores, and the diva is fatally shot. Dallas learns from her dying words that the diva has hidden the stones inside her body. After she dies, Dallas removes them from her abdomen, giving them to Ruby to hold as he defeats the Mangalores and saves the rest of the passengers and crew. Lilu is able to defeat the Mangalores that attempt to ransack the diva's quarters. Zorg, having flown himself to Floston, fights Lilu at the diva's quarters, injuring her and forcing her to retreat. 
he takes the case he believes contains the stones while starting a time bomb. When Dallas goes to recover Lilu, Zorg finds the case to be empty. Zorg re-enters the liner just as Dallas, Lilu, Cornelius, and Ruby leave it on Zorg's ship while the rest of the passengers escape in the liner's emergency craft. Zorg is able to stop his bomb, but the defeated Mangalores activate another bomb, destroying Zorg and the liner. The four return to the temple on Earth as the great evil rushes towards the planet. There, Dallas finds Li Lu disillusioned and unwilling to perform her role, believing that humans will destroy themselves despite her rescue of them. As the protagonists arrange the stones in the temple to form their weapon, they are briefly baffled by their ignorance of the weapon's operation, but discover that each stone is triggered by the presence of the classical element to which it corresponds. Dallas then convinces Li Lu to perform her role, embraces her, and kisses her. At this, Li Lu releases the weapon's divine light, causing the great evil to become a new moon in Earth's orbit. Later, the President and General Munro go to the reconstitution lab to congratulate Dallas on his successful mission, but he and Li Lu are unavailable, despite the President's assertion that he is in a hurry. Viewers then see he and Li Lu are making love in the resurrection chamber,